so kind, and thank you, uh, George, for those uh, words that you uh, shared. Um, I want to thank the Rotary Club for gathering us all here today. And while I certainly realize I play a significant role in this community, I know I don't trump the football coach. <laughs> I'm not delusional about that. Uh, this is my seventh speech, as you heard uh, George uh, say. And uh, I was thinking about my good friend Ken who talked about the Army outfit. And I've, I've seen my weight go up and down <laughs> over the past seven years. And look, just last year, I told my husband, I said, look, this is it. I am going to uh, get a rowing machine to help me. And he said, that's what you said year before last when you got me a look. <laughs> and he gave it away. I said, no, no, I'm really going to work with this uh, rowing machine. Um, we are now into 2023, and I think I got on the rowing machine once in 2022. <laughs> so I have decided that I'm going to have a going out of fitness sale. <laughs> I also want to take a minute to ask all of my fellow elected officials to stand up. We are honored today to have our sheriff, our DA who is here, we have council members, we have senators and representatives. Would all of our elected officials please stand up today so everyone can see you. <laughs> listen, I honor you as I serve with you because listen, I know that public service is not for the faint part. <laughs> And I thank each and every one of you for what you do and for being here today. And of course, I am uh, so fortunate to have my uh, husband here today, Marvin Broom, and my granddaughter, Sydney, who is here from college, from Howard University for the holidays, and uh, my biggest cheerleaders and supporters. I have to have them in the room. And so glad they're here. I am so blessed to have a great team of public servants that work for city parish government. You know, we have approximately 4,500, 4,500 public servants, people who work for city parish government. And they literally work in the trenches. They clean canals, they cut grass, they apprehend criminals, they put out fires, they rebuild streets, and they do so much more. And that's why many of them are not here today, because they're working for you. But let's celebrate our city parish workers, please, today. <laughs> and also, some of my senior level uh, officials uh, who work with me, senior level team members, are here today. And I'm going to ask them to stand up real quickly. Many of them you know already. I said quickly. So many of them you know already. We have a new member of our team. Uh, he is a veteran and he is a major general, retired. And that is our new CAO, Glenn Curtis. Glenn, would you stand up, sir? And I, I didn't give kudos and appreciation to my dear friend who still texts me almost every day and calls me Daryl Gizzle, who served this community very well in that role as well. I see my fire chief is here, uh, my police chief is here, and uh, my fire chief just celebrated his first anniversary about a week ago, uh, Chief Kimball, and uh, keep up the good work. You've hired 51 new firefighters, and you uh, we've uh, reduced our response time by 30%. Your job looks really secure. <laughs> and so uh, I decided to provide you all today, because I know I only have a short amount of time, uh, with a comprehensive review of 2022 in a handout. 
And so please take it home, review it, and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Now, this is also online because we could, own, you know, I, I, I'm very frugal, Richard, very frugal. So I only had 250 made. And I don't know how many people are here today, but hopefully you get one. If not, it is online as well. You know, on New Year's Eve, uh, I went downtown around 10.30 in the morning, and I engaged with families who were celebrating New Year's Eve with various fun activities. Uh, they had arts and crafts, and there was a still walker uh, walking around, still, still walker. And then at 12 noon, we raised the red stick in anticipation of the new year. That, and it would drop that night. And you know, as I was reflecting on 2022 and embarking on a new beginning with 2023, I realized that we are indeed red stick rising. You know, some people may believe that our community is losing people and not attracting bright minds and new families. But according to the Brack report, and contrary to many opinions, the data shows, and I believe in data, shows that people are moving to Baton Rouge at a rapid pace. The 2021 data revealed in 2022 shows that more people moved into Baton Rouge than out. And according to Brack, that's about 25 people a day making red stick their home. If you look in this book, you see we had a positive net migration in 2022. And so what does population growth mean? It means economic growth. Businesses are attracted to the Baton Rouge region. Just ask Dan Burrell, the founder and executive chairman of Burrell Aviation. On December 12th, I, along with the executive team of Burrell Aviation, the governor, state legislators, metro council members, uh, and the team of the Baton Rouge Metro Airport broke ground on 50, a 53 acre development at our airport that could represent an investment of up to $183 million and make the airport a hub for cargo and aviation related activities. That's a big deal. And according to Adam, almost every week, we have another company coming to visit. Now, did you think our job forecast was weak even when the new Amazon hires were coming in 2023? Well, according to economist Lauren Scott, the opening of this gigantic Amazon facility at the old Cortana site and the expected industrial construction boom is positioning the Baton Rouge metro area to gain 12,400 jobs over the next few years. The red stick is rising. Now, while our unemployment rate in 2022 was 2.7% below the national average, we will push to connect our unemployed with jobs. So we have launched a $1.8 million partnership with the Baton Rouge Area Chamber and Visit Baton Rouge to connect our unemployed with jobs through initiatives which help prepare potential employees with career training and also focusing on a youth internship initiative providing entry-level opportunities for high school and college students and initi initiating a national recruitment of tourists and talent. You know, equity and inclusion has always been a pillar of my administration. It is directly connected to communities that thrive and prosper and community economic development. So in 2022, we launched our Office of Supplier Diversity to increase competition by helping small businesses owned by women, minorities, and veterans. The goal is to increase city parish contract diversity to 25%. So as you can see, our economy is strong and rising. But let me just say this. 
In order to be a city that's on the rise, that people want to continue to migrate to, that businesses are attracted to, we have to be a safe city. <clears throat> now, when people ask you, when your neighbors ask you, what is the city doing about crime? I want you to tell them this. We're hiring more law enforcement officers, specifically more police officers, and paying them higher wages. Tell them we're attacking violence at its roots by helping our youth and families find better paths in life. Tell them we're prioritizing mental health and policing our streets with real-time technology. Tell them we've invested $33 million of ARP money on the public safety front, including pay raises for police personnel training, pay raises that are 13% over the last two years. We've given pay raises for police that total 13% over the last two years. We've given $10,000, $15,000, I'm sorry, ten to fifteen thousand dollars towards recruitment bonuses, and this will continue to keep our pay for officers competitive and reward their dedication. We've given eight million dollars to purchase approximately two hundred and twenty new police units and equip them. We've put funding to strengthen our intelligence and technology like upgrades to the capacity of a real-time crime center software and hardware. And the list goes on and on. We're adding more license plate readers and our community camera share program, Connect Blue. We realize that perception is reality. And the fact is that Baton Rouge will not tolerate crime of any magnitude. When people say we can do more, I say yes, we can do more. And we will always continue to do more to reduce crime in our community. However, what I think we are not doing enough of is working together in the same direction. And that is the story that everyone needs to hear and everyone needs to share. In November of 2022, East Baton Rouge Parish launched the Public <coughs> Safety Partnership, a multi-dimensional collaboration, including all our federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies in East Baton Rouge. Our DA, our sheriff, our police chief, and others are part of this team. It also includes the U.S. Attorney's Office. <coughs> our safe, hopeful, and healthy program, and the mayor's office. Now these are the four goals because this is a plan that will be effective. We want to first increase investments in community partnerships, outreach, and engagement that focuses on reducing gun violence. Secondly, we are prioritizing gun crimes and high-risk offenders when prosecuting criminal cases, both in district and federal we're addressing blight and infrastructure that contributes to gun violence in neighborhoods. And we're identifying and focusing law enforcement resources <coughs> on violent individuals and locations. We do this by utilizing data, technology, intelligence sharing, and proactive policing. In 2022, I read a Time Magazine article that said violent crime in the U.S. is surging. But we know what to do about it. The authors stated, unfortunately, we've learned over time that no single strategy, whether led by police or community members, can stem violence all by itself. While certain anti-violence programs can succeed in isolation, violence citywide typically remains stubbornly high because no intervention is strong enough to resolve it on its own. For large, sustained declines in violence, cities need a collaborative effort that leverages multiple strategies at once. And because 
of the toxicity of our politics, many cities struggle to mobilize and sustain a multi-dimensional response that depends heavily on collaboration. Well, I'm proud to say that that's not the case here in that group because this plan is a representation of a collaborative public safety strategy that will expand our work in maintaining a safe, hopeful, and healthy community 2.0. Let me be clear once again. While we cannot build safe communities through merely arrest, I assure you that we will use every tool possible to stop the violence in our community. And those perpetrators of violence in our community will be held accountable. We will accomplish this with law enforcement, but we will also accomplish this and have made great strides with our community members who are fed up with the violence in their community. I am so thankful to the tremendous amount of community organizers, nonprofits, and everyday citizens who are stepping up to the plate to make Baton Rouge the best place it can be. Lastly, we will continue to rise and improve our infrastructure. Two areas of focus are transportation and drainage. In 2017, when I came, I think one of the uh, first announcements I made was about Pico Lane. How many of you all remember that? There's about five people. <laughs> well, well, maybe you will, uh, it, your memory will be jogged uh, when you see that we are moving forward, Fred, on the Pico Lane interchange project. The estimated cost of the project is $56 million, and hopefully construction will start in late February. Now, we have been working, Fred has been working tirelessly. I will not let him go home at night until I see these lights synchronized. And he has done an awesome job of doing that. I saw his wife in Dillard's the other day, and she said, when are you going to let Fred come home sometime? <laughs> He's done a great amount of work, he and his team. He has uh, done 80, they have done 80% of completion for all signals. That's 400 signals. Uh, they have connected the signals on major corridors to Interstate 10 widening. As 13 different quarters and about 175 signals that will be connected. Uh, he has powered up uh, about 117 signals to areas around hospital locations for safety issues. Uh, we have 310 school flashes installed to provide more safety for school kids. And we have emergency vehicle preemption, 440 signals for fire EMS to respond to emergencies in a timely manner. We have also used $56 million of ARPA funds for drainage. We've removed 23 million pounds from storm drains. We've cleaned 86 miles of pipes and 42,000 feet of roadside ditches. We've repaired 680 sinkholes. In addition, we've uh, done 20,000 cubic yards of cleaning from Bayou Manshack. And in 2017, I also announced the development of our first stormwater master plan. The plan calls for a review of the capacity of existing drainage systems, as well as an evaluation of drainage on a regional level by working with officials from Ascension, Iberville, Livingston, and St. James Parishes. The effects of stormwater runoff is a critical issue that is facing cities across America. Communities are concerned about flooding often caused by the increased amounts of stormwater runoff. The federal and state governments in many instances are mandating local stormwater programs to control pollution. There is no question that stormwater issues exist in our city parish. So where do we go from here? I have decided to implement 
a stormwater advisory committee that will be formed to provide a forum for key community stakeholders to advise city parish staff on continuing development of the stormwater utility and recommended potential stormwater service activities to address our citizens' needs and meet state and federal stormwater requirements. The Stormwater Advisory Committee will be composed of representatives and key stakeholders from across a broad spectrum of community interest, including council members, residents, city parish staff, the business community, commercial property owners, developers, builders, business groups, and special interest groups that represent economic development, environmental, or other city parish committees. The details of this committee will be announced in February. In closing, let me say this. I talk to citizens on a daily basis from all walks of life, whether I'm at the grocery store, whether I am coming from a church, leaving church, and while they may acknowledge the challenges that we face, I have to tell you that I am surprisingly fulfilled when I hear them talk more about the progress that we're making and when I hear their optimism about the future. Because I believe that they too see us as red stick rising. Rising to impact litter through our Brighten Up Baton Rouge initiative. Rising to eliminate blight with a dedication of $4.5 million. Rising to do vigorous work on Plank Road and the Florida Quarter projects. Rising to welcome the film industry back to Baton Rouge with more productions like Disney's National Treasure which spent more than $50 million in Baton Rouge and more than $17 million on the Louisiana payroll, rising to strategically cut homelessness in half with outreach teams, service bans for AIDS, evaluating resources or and elevating resources for mental health and substance abuse, rising to address the housing needs of low to moderate income residents and workers by providing affordable housing by ensuring reliable, robust funding for housing in Baton Rouge, rising to reduce the poverty rate every year in our parish through programs like Employ Baton Rouge and workforce development, rising to expand and support small businesses and entrepreneurial ventures, rising as a city of transformational change and equitable and inclusive community where a vision of peace, prosperity, and progress becomes a reality for everyone, rising to live out the rotary values of truth, fairness, goodwill, better friendships, and positive impact. We are rested and we are rising.